hereby declare this meeting of the Howell Township Zoning Board to be open, adequate notice having been given pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Act in the following manner. First, on January 10, 2017, a copy of said notice was mailed to the store ledger in the Tritown News. Second, on January 10, 2017, a copy of said notice was hand-delivered to the clerk of the Township of Howell. Third, on January 10, 2017, said notice was posted in the office of the Zoning Board and on the bulletin board in the Howell Township Municipal Building, 4567, Route 9, Howell Township, New Jersey. In accordance with the Fire Prevention Code and your safety, please be advised that this facility is designed for two emergency exits, which are on your right at the front and rear of the meeting room. Furthermore, smoking is not permitted in the municipal building. Please take note that this meeting is being videotaped for possible future broadcast on Howell Township TV 77. Yeah, I mean, Thank you, Eileen. Can we have a roll call, please? Yes, you may. Yeah. Mr. Armada? Is that the old I have not heard from. I don't know what she at Mr. Cartolicchio? Present. Mr. Mertens? Here. Mr. O'Donnell's been excused. Mr. Posh? Here. Mr. St. Clemente? Here. Mr. Turk? Here. Mr. Bloom? Here. And Chairman Nansen? Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. Can we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Would you please swear in the professionals, please? Okay. Good evening, everyone. I just want, for those of you who are not aware, tonight is my last meeting with you all. Um, but I want to introduce you to Mika. She's taken over from CME, and she's here tonight to meet you guys and to get a flavor for how you guys run your meeting. And she'll be sitting in on behalf of CME moving forward. Yeah, before before that happens, we want to thank you for your time here, and I want to thank you for all you have taught me. You know, I've been here a long time, and you've been here a long time, not as long as Jack, but you know. I think that'd be a little difficult. <laughs> nobody nobody's been here as long as Jack. Yeah, that's for sure. But, but the two the two of you guys have really. I, I want to thank you for all you've helped me with, taught me, and. It's just been a, such a pleasure to be associated. Well, thanks, guys. I want to thank I'll you. Miss you guys. Jen, it's been an honor and a pleasure. You can always come back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come back and visit. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Tropley. Approval of minutes. Regular meeting, May 8, 2017. Eligible voters, Armada, Carlicchio, Martins, O'Donnell, Posh, San Clemente, Turk, Bloom, and Nansen. Can I have a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Mr. Carlicchio. Second. Second by Mr. San Clemente. Can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Carlicchio. Yes. Mr. Mertens. Yes. Mr. Posh. Yes. Mr. San Clemente. Yes. Mr. Turk. Yes. Mr. Bloom. Yes. Mr. Uh, Chairman Nansen. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Vouchers? We have no vouchers this evening. Correspondence? Uh, the only correspondence I have was e already emailed to the members, uh, with the exception of an email from Jennifer Krimko. She is the attorney for Wildwood Ranch, which was on tonight's agenda. Right. There was a problem with the notice in the paper, which is why they've asked to move their application to July 10th, and they will be noticing for that hearing date as well. July 10th? Yes. Are they the first case? No, they will be second. We have the interpretation or uh, appeal for Mr. Parisi is first, and Wildbrook will be second. Uh, Mr. Mallon, how long, Mr. Tropley, how long do you think? I know you're not involved with that case, but have we one never anything? knows, Mr. Chair, when mm -hmm. it comes to that particular application. But um, I think, given the public's interest in Wildbrook, at some point in time, you may wish to. Again, this is my opinion. Maybe 
limit them to an hour or so, hour and a half, and then say we're starting Wildbrook at a certain time? Because it's yeah. got great public interest already, and um, I think th from what I understand, even though I'm conflicted out of Parisi, that it's been substantially heard. I could be wrong, but... Yeah, but they, they were supposed to have professional testimony. Y'all have nothing? We were right, well, you know, people yeah. to use fair answer. And okay. that was for July 10th, right. correct? July so, 10th, so they got to the end if, of the month. Well, then perhaps, uh, you know, an executive decision would have to be made at that time if there's no, no submittals done within the time frame prescribed by the MLUL. Maybe they he should be bounced. He did ask me if that was a hard and fast date, due July or June 30th, to have his paperwork in. Yes. And I told him it was. And I said that's to give everyone a chance to review mm -hmm. it. And I said it's also public okay. is allowed to come in and see it right. 10 days ahead. So if it's not here, I said you'll have to move your case. Right. The second meeting in July right now has nothing on it. So if either one had to get carried again, they both expire July 31st, so we okay. possibly could maybe start, at least here one, start here and the other, and then finish them on the 24th. Okay. Okay, now, uh, case number BA16-06, Wildwood Branch, LLC. This case will be moved to July 10th, yes. 7.30, with, no, with, with new notice. Yes. Okay. Expiration date? Did they extend the expiration date? July 31st, 2017. Expiration date has been extended to July 31st, 2017. Thank you. Okay, any other correspondence? No other correspondence. Okay. And no resolutions. I was just fixing to ask you that. <laughs> so no resolution. Okay, application before the board. Case number BA16-10, SMC Properties, LLC, Preliminary and Final Major Site Plan and Woodlands Management. Application of SMC Properties, LLC, is applicant at VNS Lawn and Landscape, Inc., as owner seeking preliminary and final major site plan and Woodlands Management Plan approval to construct a one-story senior citizen assistant living building consisting of 30 bedrooms, 18,680 square feet on the premises known as Block 183, Lot 22, 985, Route 33. The application was scheduled to be heard on May 8, 2017, when it was carried to June 12, 2017. Expiration date, June 30, 2017. Eligible voters, Armada, Carlicchio, Mertens, O'Donnell, Poss, San Clemente, Bloom, and Nansen. And at this point, we have a full board with, with our alternates filling in. Except Mr. Turk is not eligible to vote, unless you want to. So he's good to vote. We're good to vote. Right. Everybody can vote. You're, you are eligible. Okay. So you got to do the whole presentation, correct? Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, but, but the, the other thing is the, the owner's not here to testify. Mr. Chairman, if we could start and then we could address those things, because I can't talk right now. Mr. Cohen, do you want to? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, for the record, Todd Cohen representing the applicant, SMC Properties, uh, LLC. Uh, as you will recall, on April 24th, the Zoning Board did grant a use variance to construct the facility you described, uh, the assisted living and memory care facility uh, with the 30 beds, and, and certain variances. And wave design waivers were also granted, which are outlined in Section 3 of CME's new review letter of June 12th. Uh, they're also in the resolution that was previously granted. Uh, since that time, and now we're seeking preliminary and final site plan approval right. for what was shown to you at the time of the use phase. Okay. Can, uh, I, can I, Mr. Tropley, okay, so basically this is a, you know, it's just to finalize the, the use variance portion's already over. It's over, and it wasn't bifurcated. This is a as final preliminary and final site plan application and 
Mr. Chair, as far as I'm concerned, um, all we need, uh, and this is the testimony from the engineer. Okay. Um, the use variance is law of the case at this point in time, and I see no reason why, uh, respectfully, that the, the alternate can't hear. I mean, it's a new application. Okay. So I, I'm fine with that. Uh, okay. I see no, no impediment whatsoever. And uh, Mr. Cohen, right. are you okay with that? Right. I, I mean, if, if you could just briefly put a background on it through Mr. DeFalco, it would probably be helpful. But I'll submit. Thank you. Okay. So just, just to bring the board up to speed since our last time, also Mr. DeFalco uh, has met with Mr. Mallon, as was recommended, to discuss the, the redesign of the drainage facility, and that's indicated in the plans that were submitted and also in Mr. Mallon's uh, review letter dated June 8th. And Mr. DeFalco also consulted with the New Jersey Department of Transportation regarding the Route 33 access and the future improvements for this part of Route 33. And we're prepared to talk about that this evening as well. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let me start over or not? Nope. Okay. So with that, um, I believe we should have Mr. DeFalco sworn. We have two exhibits to mark, and we can begin uh, the application. Okay. Just for the test when you do this evening, do you choose the whole truth, not about the true self you got? Yes, I do. Richard DeFalco, D-I-F-O-L-C-O, testifying for uh, the licensed engineering part of this application, and perhaps some planning too, I'm not sure, but we're going to be testifying for the site plan portion of this application for SMC. Okay. We had two new exhibits to mark. Uh, one was A23. Could you identify that and, uh, for the board, please? A23 is a snapshot of the landscape plan in color, which just highlights the the buffering that is proposed between the site improvements and the neighboring residential lot to the north and the farmland buffer to the west. And A24 the driveway permit a driveway access permit application to be filed with the NJDOT as part of our overall application which is signed by the owner of lot 21 which is the owner to the rear that has the access easement to the property uh, Mr. Stephen Mount is that correct that is correct the owner of the land adjacent to us who has a driveway easement out to 33 is joining in with us to make a joint application for a single driveway cut to New Jersey State Highway 33. And his signature on that shows that he, he acquiesces can, to the design. Yes, correct? he consents to the alignment and placement of the driveway and the connection to the proposed 30-foot wide driveway by this applicant. And his signature was required by the NJDOT, is that correct? Yes, we need applications from both users of the driveway. Okay, thank you. Um, would you put your qualifications? Oh, you do his qualifications? Yes, please. Okay, his qualifications be continued yes. on the last time to be accepted as a. Well, it, it, new application, let's go ahead and do it. We re swearing. Well, if we didn't bifurcate, did we bifurcate it or did we not bifurcate it? Yeah, at the end, you bifurcated. Okay. You bifurcated at the end of it. You voted separately on this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We all know we. I, just briefly, give us your educational background. Just to keep the record clean. Sure. I'm a licensed engineer, state of New Jersey. Uh, I graduated Rutgers University, and I'm licensed since 1977 as a licensed engineer. Thank you. We accept your qualifications. Thank you. Fitz, would you briefly describe uh, to the board the plan before them and the access uh, that we have worked out? Yeah, so when we were here last, there was a, a single sheet handout that I prepared with, which talked about 
an alternate way to do the driveway alignment. If you remember, the original plan had a, like a almost like a, a dead end lot. Once you pulled in, you had to do a K turn to get out of the lot. So what we've come up with, a, a couple things have changed. The building that is proposed is the same size building that we had last time. But what we did was we took the outside covered porch off the back and we put it at the end of the building so that we were able to move the building further to the east to allow room for this circular pattern to develop staying out of the farmland buffer. When that little appendage, the porch was on the back, it, it pinched us too tight and we couldn't have a 30-foot driveway. So now we have a 30-foot proposed driveway, two-way driveway, into the site from 33, and we have a 30-foot aisle in front of the building. We continue to propose a 24-foot loop around the side with parking on it, but the 30-foot is up the driveway and in front of the building. So that's one, one site plan change we made. More importantly is we met with the DOT and what has happened is that even though there is an, a deed easement for a driveway that runs the side property, if you, if you recall, it's a 10-foot wide deeded easement across this property, our property, to the owner of Lot 21 who is directly behind us. Even though that there's a deeded easement, the regulation is going to hold that only one driveway cut per lot is allowed. So we need to share that curb cut with the neighbor to the rear and after several alignments this alignment was approved by the owner to the rear he has a very large uh, like a camper bus almost 40 feet long we had one driveway alignment which came down to 33 did a hard turn and another hard turn he could not make that turn with his vehicle so he approved this alignment and if the board is so inclined to approve this, then we will submit this alignment to the DOT. But we did obtain his signature on the application form because the DOT requires both this applicant and the shared driveway with the neighbor to both be co-applicants for the application. And we'll go in as a, as a shared driveway to the DOT. But they would not allow him to maintain his existing driveway, so we're putting the DOT is requiring concrete curbing across the entire frontage, and we're closing up his driveway opening as it is today, and putting a one, de one depressed curb for this new opening, for the new driveway. We've also moved the driveway, the original plan had the driveway closer to the middle of the property. We pushed it as far as we could to the west. If you visit the site, you'll notice that this is a single lane in each direction, Route 33. And as soon as you get to the end of the property, there's a center painted yellow median that starts to develop. And it's right at the end of this curb return that we're proposing. And we can't put the driveway within that painted area, but as soon as that paint stops, that's the first available space we can begin our entrance to our site. So we pushed the driveway on our property as far to the west as we could, which is right where that paint stops. So we're as far west and far, as far away from the activity which happens down here at the cabin. And that was done. Uh, and like I said, the owner consented to that alignment of the new driveway. So what that meant was there farm, the farmland buffer that we proposed based on the chairman's recommendation was 50 feet plus the 10 foot easement that's there. So we're really 60 feet from the farm. And that comes down along this, the west side of our property and then arcs back around to meet the sideline. So the old driveway that had been in the, in the farmland buffer is still in it, but it's been relocated to a new alignment to get him connected into our driveway. And then we're taking out the the driveway and put planting, you, that colored rendering you can see this planting in this triangular piece which now will be between the driveway and the property line will be planted with evergreen trees and shade trees to buffer that angle of the, of the farm.
Did you meet with Sherry on the planting? I did not meet with Sherry, no. Okay. And, and, if, and if there's, there is about 50 more trees than the last plan. We added about 50 more uh, evergreen trees. Uh, and we filled in the area that was, we have a double row, almost a triple row in this one section. Right. And with regard to the rear of the property, the parking lot is more than 100 feet from the, from the property line. So one of the four criteria that needs to be met for the primitive buffer is a parking setback of more than 100 feet. And this is more than 100 feet to the parking lot. And then the landscaping, I believe, is then sufficient between the property line and the improvements. We have uh, two or three rows of trees in that area. But again, if, if Sherry needs more or different locations, we'll be glad to relocate or change species or change sizes as, as she sees fit. Sherry? Uh, yeah, um, in uh, my review, I, I did ask for some of the species to be switched. Um, because the wall and the evergreens are so close together, we really can't put you know, large spruce trees on top of that wall. Um, so, you know, they could switch that row to a more narrow, upright type of evergreen mm -hmm. and then have the larger um, spruce trees further back. And um, I also commented I just wanted a little more variety on the deciduous trees as well as the shrubs along the building. They only have one kind of shrub along the front of the building. We'd be glad to make that change. Okay. I believe those are comments H, uh, I, J, and K in CME's review letter of June 12th, and we will comply with those requests. Great. Thank you. Getting back to the site layout, so as we enter the site with the 30-foot driveway, we enter into a parking lot which has 32 parking spaces, and there is a a dumpster area which is fenced in with room for the two two trash dumpsters and recycling bins. And I noticed that we received a letter from the uh, recycling commission or recycling director that the plan is acceptable to them. Okay. Uh, what about medical uh, pickups for medical waste? I believe the at the at the original application. Uh, portion. It was testified to that any of that would be handled by a private contractor who would go into the building and retrieve it in a proper enclosure in the building and then okay, take it, it out. Be inside, yes, outside. there won't be any outside uh, medical waste disposal. Okay, because okay. I, I know a lot of lab, you know, labs they leave it out by the front door or stuff and. Yeah. You know, they, they pick and up uh, after hours. There won't be any of that. Then. Right, and this is more of a. If you recall the testimony, more of a of a uh, treatment facility memory for care. memory care, as opposed to medical procedures, so there'll be very limited quantities of any of that. Uh, okay. They're going to have a, a visiting nurse or a doctor once in a while to come in and just, you know, maybe check eyesight or ears or general questions, but it's not a medical facility where they're doing procedures. Well, I was just one blood test, you know stuff like that right going to the labs but if there's anything it'll be kept inside the inside. building yes okay mr chair yes ma'am can we talk about the enclosure for a minute yes so you're pro proposing fencing we typically like to see masonry enclosure around a uh, dumpster and recycling and there's also a requirement in our ordinance that it be landscaped and there's no landscaping anywhere near where that enclosure is going just a tree right so we're proposing a concrete slab with uh, steel bollards around the inside of the fence, but we felt that a fence is more decorative than the masonry enclosure. I, uh, I would respectfully disagree. The fence okay. gets beat up, and then it's broken, and then it, it looks not aesthetically pleasing, and we typically require a masonry enclosure. Split face yeah. Do you have a problem? Split face, split face block is direct. Yeah. Decorative. We, we can make it a block enclosure, very simply, and, and we'll also add landscaping behind it. But uh, with all the evergreen trees around it, I don't know who the landscape's going to benefit. I have no problem putting landscaping around it, but it's going to be, you know, facing the open well, part Well, I mean, of our ordinance requires it. I would recommend that you put in landscaping yes. per ordinance requirement. That's fine. And I would, requ I would request that you coordinate with Shari as opposed to yes. what landscaping goes there. Okay. And we'll do that. Okay. So
So the parking lot then has 32 spaces, and we have a small island in the center, and we have a sidewalk path that brings the uh, people who park on the west side of the site through the island to a crosswalk to the front door. At the front door, there's a covered porch and a concrete slab under the porch, now like will, a sidewalk. Will, will the parking lot be striped for, you know, hatch stripes for the crosswalk? Yes, the parking lot is striped with hatch crosswalk from they, the... It will be striped? Yes, it will be striped as okay. a painted crosswalk. Okay. Now, it, it looks like that's about the same width as a, a parking stall. That's not going to... There's no parking right in front of the door, right? No, and what that is, it's the same alignment as the access for the handicap parking. So they're one and the same. The, the crosswalk aligns with the handicap parking okay. access between the two handicap spaces. Okay. There's no sidewalk to the rear of the property. There is a small porch enclosure on the north side of the building, and that has a fenced area which restricts the residents to be outside but not to be able to wander onto the property. Now, will there be a, a lock gate there to the outside of that fence? If you recall the testimony last time, there was a lockdown. It's a lockdown facility, so they, they can't get out. No, but it, will there be a gate provided with either a key in case of a fire and they have to get access into that back door? I think we spoke about, if I'm not mistaken, we spoke about a, a card access that they could swipe and open up the gate. Okay, but so there will be a gate. It won't be fence. like a chain with a bolt on it. it right. It'll be easily opened okay. in case of an emergency. As well as all the exterior doors, they're only accessed with a code. Okay. You just can't open the door and walk in or out of this building. You have to be buzzed in and buzzed out. It's, okay. it's basically, like Todd said, a lockdown facility. Uh, we talked about parking of 32 cars. And the amount of employees on the site leaves about 20 cars available for the day-to-day -day other people who might come. Uh, the question came up in one of the review letters about, well, how about uh, holidays or parties? And the testimony during the original application was that there would be scheduled times for perhaps room one through six, you come between nine and ten, and room six through, and different times so that they don't have a mass uh, parking uh, arrival time, and that it will be scheduled so that they can spread out the need for parking over the day's events, so that they wouldn't have, it, it's, it's all arranged, the, you know, time-wise, so that there's not a problem with parking. And I think there's sufficient parking. I think the applicant testified on many of his other sites, and he has more than 100 throughout the country. He had 15 spaces was a, a number they shoot for, and now we have 32. So from his operational point of view, he's very comfortable with the number. And from, from our review, I think that there's sufficient parking for this use. These these residents that are in this building do not drive. They're dropped off and picked up. And th this is not like you would think assisted living where you have some freedom to come and go. Once you're in this building, you don't leave until someone picks you up. And some people stay here for the rest of their life. So, I mean, it's that kind of a, a location. Mr. So, DeFalco? Yes. T to that end, shouldn't there be like a drop-off area by the front door so i mean because right now the way it looks is that you know these individuals would be dropped off in the drive aisle and have to walk through a parking lot like through parking spaces to get into the building there's no like dedicated drop-off area okay, yeah i mean i think we can put a couple of signs in front there's, there's a lot of extra spots here and we could have maybe two spaces that say uh you know 30 minute parking only and so that somebody who is coming and does get dropped off, they will be as escorted in, there'll be time required to get in, to get settled in, so that a few spots might be open, but I, don't, I mean, once the people are in there, there's not much in and out. Once the beds fill up, it's filled, and nobody's really using that spot. But we could designate sign 
for maybe two spaces on either side of the front door as drop-off only. And this way, uh, it, that can be available for anybody who is coming in. There'll be an open spot for them to come. Mr. And Chair, again, that'll be scheduled so that they don't just randomly show up. Wait, right. you're telling me that if I want to go see my mom in this facility, I have to make an appointment? No, I'm saying that if you want to drop somebody off, they will know when they're coming and they'll schedule the arrivals so that those spots for the arriving patients can be left open. And if they have one arrival at 9 in the morning and one at 11, they'll know that there's multiple times that they can arrive at the spot. What if I, but what if I wanted to take my mom out? I don't need an appointment to take my mom out for the day, right? So I, I am just concerned that you're talking about these individuals that have to be on lockdown and they, they're not, you know, uh, able to do what we would typically see, but yet we've made no provision to get them into and out of the building other than going through parked cars. So I am concerned, you know, and, and to that end, what, what about an ambulance? Like what happens if there's an emergency? These are elderly patients, correct? So how would an ambulance get in? You know, especially if they need to bring in a stretcher. So, and what happens if those two cars parked in those drop-off parking spaces while something happens? It's a concern for me that there's no easy way of ingress and egress of the individuals that are going to be staying in the facility. If there's an ambulance, they can park in front of the handicap at the crosswalk. There's, a, there's an eight-foot wide, unparked, direct in front of the front door that they can do that. But as far as the picking up your mom and, go and taking her out, we can designate additional spaces. So there's four or five spaces that are just for the drop and pick off. We can put as many spots as you want. Where are the handicap spaces? Because the plan I have, I don't see any. The handicap spots are on both sides of the crosswalk. If you look on three of nine, sheet three of nine. <clears throat> Three of nine. Four is the grading the plan. Three is the site plan. So this is really not making any sense here. Because uh, so you have the, this connecting walk from the island to the building. So when a car pulls up, they're going to be to the left of the two handicapped spots, and the two handicapped spots is one on each side of the walk. Is that correct? The walk is, like the, the walk is in front of all the spots. There's an entire sidewalk between the building and the parking lot, mm -hmm. which is behind the curb. So there's a curbing See, there's, there's a and a sidewalk. sidewalk. Curb and sidewalk. And, then, the, and then what's the width of that sidewalk? to the parking lot from the buildings. Yeah. I don't see a width there. There's a, there's a six foot sidewalk parallel to the building, six foot. which is touching the curb. So the combination is curb and sidewalk. So you park the car, there's a curb, and then there's a sidewalk immediately behind the curbing. And then there's a porch in front of the building, and you can walk under the porch into the front door. There's so a continual. So if, if a car comes in or an ambulance has to come in, they come in off of 33, drive around the parking lot, and then loop around to get to the front of the building. No. If the ambulance comes in, it comes in like this and stops right here. And the front door is right here. Front door okay, is in so line with the crosswalk. So that's the concern, is there's two handicapped parked. What happens if there's two cars there parked? Right, but they don't park in the stripe. There's a striped out zone between yeah, I, yeah, I understand that, but if there's two cars, two handicapped spots, and there's two cars in there, and now there's an ambulance, is that going to be enough room for an, an ambulance or any type of emergency if there are two handicapped, if both handicapped spots are taken? Yes. How wide is that hatched area? Eight feet. Eight foot. You've got eight feet between. That's is plenty that of room good? for a stretcher and a crew to walk through eight feet. is pretty wide. Is that good, Jennifer? I mean, I think it's all right. Okay. I, I would prefer to see maybe less parking spaces and, and an area that they could pull up immediately adjacent to the building. I mean, that would be my preference, but I would defer to the applicant and, of course, the board. 
what's what's the parking rig? How many parking spots are they required? We don't have a, we don't have parking standards for this type of use in our ordinance. Oh, and so the testimony that was provided with the use variance application was that they typically need like one per employee plus 15 spots. Right. So I think that they, you know, they have 32 spots on this plan. I think that they could probably get away with less parking. Um, you know, I understand that you want to make sure that there, there's an availability of parking if people want to go visit. But the unfortunate circumstance is that it's not frequent that you're going to see all these spots full. Right. And in, a, in, in a, a unique circumstance where there's an event, you could always accommodate in, in some fashion. Um, but I think when you're dealing with this demographic of the population okay. that probably less parking spaces would be better and having like a designated area in the front for either patient drop off or or an ambulance well you, well, you could you Jennifer could if you take away one of the handicap move it move it over and then just use that area of the one that you're moving don't even have a parking spot well, well, you could take out two parking spaces Th that's what I'm saying. And take actually out. Actually, you could take the two beyond the beyond the handicap towards the uh, refuse area. Right. Take those last two out. Make that a drop-off area. Thanks also, be you. an area where somebody could do deliveries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just well, just you know cross hatch it, stripe it. But you have the cro you have the walkway. Could you just move the handicap? That's what I'm saying. Move one, the handicap. Oh, you could move do that. One too. handicap sure. to the left, one to the saying. right. Sure. And now those two original handicapped spots. Uh, just make right, it a little just wider. Right, just widen that yeah. front yeah. entrance area out. Okay. And then just hatch the whole area, and you know that if an ambulance needs to get in there, he could just back up right there. Correct. Done. I'll work you, with Jack on the alignment and painting and the striping okay and signage. Yeah, okay. Okay. yeah okay. that's fine. Board members, you all okay with that? So they're going to yeah. take okay. out those two and move them. Well, they let them work with Jack, and they'll... Yeah. they'll we, nice. we may wind up losing two spaces, so we'll have 30 available, but then there'll be room for the drop-offs of the ambulance. So okay. effectively, All right. you know, it, it'll good. be very similar, but more convenient for the people that use the site. Is that good with you, yeah. Jennifer? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, I'm going to bring up a, a kind of, I know Mr. O'Donnell's not here, but did you all approach a DOT about... Uh, Ingress and egress lanes. We did, we did, and the DOT, Mr. Raj Patel, he's in charge of issuing the permits for this part of Howell, on Route 33. He told me that there are no plans for widening the road or for a left turn center island improvements on this section of 33. He did go on to tell me that the the driveway application will have to be you know, shared, as, as I previously mentioned. It'll be a minor access permit, and that the, the use that we're proposing for this application is one of the lowest traffic generators that's on the chart, that there's nothing much less intense than an assisted living for 30 beds. It's less than an office. It's less than a drive-up restaurant or a bank or any other commercial use. It doesn't have truck traffic. It's a very low intense use. And at the time that they review it, because this state highway has a certain designation that prohibits high intensity left turn into the site from 33, but each case is reviewed based on the use that's proposed and the traffic that's generated by the use. And if they feel that the use does not create a, a need for the prohibition of left turn, the state will typically grant the waiver for the specific low intensity use to be allowed to make a left turn in. So that's, that's where this is sitting right now. There's no improvements proposed. I also mentioned to him the fact that across the street is the high intensity use, the restaurant, the cabin. And he said, although that's there, this application would not be influenced by that uh, traffic movement, that they're aware of it, but they look at this independently with its low intensity use, and that they would consider 
granting the waiver because of the low intensity use. But again, if in fact they said no to the waiver, then there would be proper signage that would say no left turn and do not enter from the westerly direction. Uh, yeah, but you, you're going to have people making that turn anyway. I understand that, and it's a practical matter. I mean, there's lots of driveways along this road today. None of them are pretty much restricted. It's pretty much you can make a left anywhere on Route 33 that I'm aware of on that section of the road. You can pull in left. You can go this driveway, the next one, the fire station, the one after that. You can make lefts up and down the highway. Well, anybody can make a left anywhere they want. It's, I mean, a legal left. Yeah, that, that's what I'm left. saying. It, it means you, know, you come down to you can turn being legal or non-legal. Right, but the fact that we moved the driveway as far to the west as we could legally, away from, I think we're more than 200 feet from the cabin's driveway now, so we're, we're not right opposite. We're pretty right. far away. My, my next question would be, or if, if DOT grants a waiver, will they remove a section of the double line, double yellow line there, so you can make a legal left? No. They start right at the... The, the, the line doesn't right prohibit you line. to make a left turn. It just means you can't pass. Yeah, but if, I, I, I tell you, I, I have seen this, and insurance companies will not pay if you make a left-hand turn across a double yellow line and you create an accident, guess what? The insurance company is not paying for it because you made an illegal... If there is a break in those double yellow lines, then it's legal to make that left-hand turn. But as long as there's a double yellow line, the insurance company is not going to pay for it. Well, to the extent that we can pursue that with the DOT. Uh, yeah, they, that's why I'm asking. I know for a street intersection, that's true. For a driveway, I'm not so sure that that right. continues to be the, the thought process. I know for a street intersection, they break the yellow. Okay. Driveways, I'm not so sure, because there's many driveways. That would be a broken line pretty much every 100 feet, you have a broken line. So I think it's corners and traffic signals and stop. Businesses, businesses. That's why they had to do that, that excavation company right there. Mm -hmm. You know how they made their driveway come way out? I'm, I'm aware of that, yes. Come back around? That, that was the reason being. Yeah. Yeah. But Mr. DeFalco? Yes. 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 You also had comments with Mr. Patel about the drainage? I did, and, yes. And, and, okay. and the discharge. And, and second of all, you, you do show the, the, the DTS, which is the, the, the typical section, that the DOT says, and they want structures within that uh, typical section. Correct. And 51 that, feet from the center of the road, the DTS, or the desired typical section, is indicated on the site plan. That's the dashed line that runs parallel to the road, but it's 51 feet from the center line. So that's the proposed future right-of-way that the DOT has contemplated for any future road improvements and they would not like to have structures within that zone. So we pulled back our stormwater basin and all our, our improvements are basically behind that 51 feet to the north of it. Yeah. And, and your, your discharge then, when you discharge from your basin, which basically is an overflow basin, um, that discharges onto DOT property, correct? And that would be part of the drainage because you'll have to get a drainage permit and access from DOT, and they will they will review that. I know you and I spoke that you had a conversation with him. Yes. And he understood that that discharges over that property. Right, because he's aware that he called it, uh, this road is designed as an umbrella section, which has high point in the crown of the road, and it's shaped like an umbrella so that the low point is the gutter line. And since there's no curb along this road now, that low point continues off the right of way, basically onto our property, and the flow is on our property, and then it flows to the west. The DOT owns the lot immediately adjacent to us on the west. It's about 85 feet. Lot 20.02 is owned by the DOT. That's, that's the lot line right maybe a third of the way up our property line. So this parcel here is owned by DOT, and that continues for about a thousand feet. About a thousand feet away is a tributary 
stream which crosses under the, the State Highway 33. So right now the drainage flows down Route 33 to the west, goes off the road into the low area of this former farm field, which is now DOT right-of-way property, and it flows very flat slope. It flows into a wooded area and then into the stream. And the proposed drainage outfall is following that same pattern. It will flow to the off gutter area, again, through the DOT right-of-way, very flat slope, and wind up in the same stream. So the DOT, when they, when they told us we had to put curbing along here, he was aware that the drainage would continue and that the state highway drainage would continue to the end of the curb. There's a series of guardrail along the edge of the pavement here, and the drainage flows off the pavement through the guardrail opening back into that same former farm field again and back to the stream. So the drainage will be consistent with what's there today, and the rate of runoff of Jack will go through that later perhaps, but the rates of runoff have been reduced, so our peak flows at this common point have been reduced so that we won't have any erosion at that property line where the discharge of our basin is. Okay. But that was also discussed with the DOT uh, engineer. Uh, any approval this board would give you would be subject to their approval? Yes, it would have to be, yes. Also, Mr. DeFalco, uh, inlet number five, you, you've got a riprap or stone riprap section there. Now, that that is not emptying into your basin, correct? Okay, number five, let me get to that sheet. Inlet number five is located near the easterly property line. Right. And part of what we're doing on this easterly property line is presently the neighbor has encroached upon a moon-shaped piece of property, maybe 200 feet long and 10 or 15 feet wide, and, and has encroached onto our land. So we're going to remove that encroachment and, and vegetate it. But as this property drains down, there's a little bit of a low point right at the eastern property line. And rather than take the off-site water through our basin, we've developed a swale system and an inlet to collect the water. So any water that enters the site, hits this swale, runs either north or south, as the case may be, and is collected by an E flat grate inlet and then piped out to a manhole and piped to the head wall, which is the discharge point near the westerly line. So it bypasses the stormwater basin. All of the on-site water, the roof of the building, the parking lot, and the part of the driveway does go directly into the basin. But this off-site water and that inlet five with the riprap, that is collecting off-site water and a small portion of the rear yard and that small low spot that's on our property and pipes that away from the basin and out to the discharge point. Well, what about sediment? Jack, do you, you know, sediment coming off of that off-site property? You know, because that, that's a construction yard, right? Yeah, well, they have to have, right, they, they would have to have that, that. That flows by gravity up to the point to the bubble of basin. It by, doesn't go through the, the, the basin itself. The oh, base, yeah, I understand that, right. but it's flowing through gravity. You've got all of the earth between well he's got he's got he's got a riprap area around the inlet to help control it he's going to have to until he gets done with his restoration he's going to have to protect that inlet to keep the sediment out of it no i i know there i i i understand they're in construction they're going to have to protect that right but that's not catching their water. That's that's catching a little bit from the backyard. It's coming from the neighbor property. That's correct, because he's got a low point there. I understand. Okay. So that neighbor's property is a construction yard. Okay. Okay, you're right now, as the water runs off, it's sheeting across the top of the ground. 
which would filter it. Mm -hmm. Now you're putting it straight into a a basin right no, out of pipe. Doesn't go. It goes in, right. It goes into the inlet and then it's piped around. I know. That's what I'm saying. But there's no filtration but for the sediment grass, that's coming off. Of there is a grass strip before the inlet. The inlet is not on the property line. It, it, no, I know. It, it's there off is, that. There is a vegetated area between the inlet and the property line. Okay. And if need be, we can slide that inlet slightly to the west to provide a little bit more of a filtered area if that's a... Of a, a well, see, that, that's my concern. Because yeah. the construction yard... I understand. They, they got backhoes, dozer, whatever they got in there. And that's all all drains straight out. Now it's got an area, you know, a, a pretty long area to filter it out. Yeah. We have enough room to move that catch basin a good 5 or 10 feet along the alignment of the pipe, Jack, do you see that? We could okay. move it towards towards the basin, but not in the basin. And we could have increased filter of maybe another 10 feet of grass before the actual structure so that any sediment could be settled out before it reaches the pipe. Okay. <clears throat> but, they, you know, that's what I, I would be concerned about. You have a problem with that, Jack? No, we can do that. We'll Would that a, work? We'll put a grass, uh, a heavy grass area for filtration. Would that work? As long as the grass stays there, yes. <laughs> I, mean, you know, okay. I mean, the other thing you do, but it's a maintenance thing, is trying to put a filter fence up there and leave it there, but that's yeah. temporary. It's not going to work permanently. What size pipe is that? I, I don't see. 18 inch. Oh, yeah, I see. It's 18 inch. Mm -hmm. If, we, if he has concerns about that, could you put, instead of putting a channel in that basin, make it say, say it's three and a half from the grate to the invert out, make it five and a half to the bottom and oh, a yeah. bit of sediment. Yeah, put, put a catch basin in yeah, instead of an inlet. Basin. And then they'd be able to like pump it out every once in a while. Sure. Yeah. 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 So we can hey, catch you know, about two feet of, we can catch some of this sediment right there. I think the grass will clean it. Put a catch but basin, make a construction it a company next door, and yeah. who knows if they got, I, I don't know if they got. They got some backhoes and everything else. Okay. What we could also do is to raise the grate and have it hold about six inches of water. The entire swale can fill up, settle out, and then perk to the ground so that it's not, it's not directly flowing into the inlet without first settling out. We could do that also. Worry about mosquitoes with that, but yeah. you're the boss. No, that's the boss over there. Did you hear that, Jack? Uh, I did not. That was if we raise the grate about six inches, it'll allow the water to not okay, flow directly in, and that would then perk into the ground. Or else we can just do it. I just do a catch basin. Do the catch basin Maybe instead. Maybe two, three well, years, you have to pump it out or just, whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can raise it six inches, but you can raise it. You'll leave it a little bit high. Or we could put the sump in, uh, about a two-foot sump, or and then clean it out every year whenever it's needed. That's a simpler solution, I think. Good idea. Okay. Anything else on the drainage, Jack? No, just uh, he actually did a nice job on it. I will compliment as much as I beat him up last time he actually <laughs> did a nice job this time and he still and he also complies with all the requirements of, of the, the reductions the infiltration and, and the flows now uh, all the of the thing, roof drains would be going into the catch basin right correct your into the storm region? pond the pond yes okay. yep and that's all the roof runoff and the driveway and the sidewalks right and yep all the impervious goes into the storm retention pond. Right. There's a small piece of driveway. That's all that doesn't go in there. Correct. The, the small piece of driveway. Keep in memory that he's filling the back of this lot almost three feet, three and a half feet. Right. But he runs all the water. Based upon the preliminary, the, the, the basin will uh, infiltrate into the ground, but I always ask for on-site testing before to make sure it works. And I talked to Mr. Falco and he said he has no problem with providing that. Okay. I don't I don't like lab tests or just take it off the, the maps. You got it in the field.
Now the emergency spillway, that's that's on your. That's going to be just the grass. It's just the grass uh, spot. It's it's where the berm basically is taken away, so that if the water ever gets to that level, rather than going over top of the berm, it just flows through that little opening and out to the right of way of the street. It won't. It won't impede the street. No. Okay. You got enough slope there. Yes. I don't see it basically overtopping that grass well because it could also go over the top of our weir and go through the pipe. Okay. So it'll it'll find the uh, the downstream uh, pipe is large enough to handle it, but if it ever does get that high, it would come out to the street without overtopping the, the berm. Rich, it's designed, what, 9.2 inches in 24 hours, I believe? Yeah, I believe so, 9.2 inches. Because a couple of weeks ago I saw that it was one lake out there. Well, <laughs> one big that's, lake. That's what the the regs, both the soils, the state, and how all require that comply with that. That's okay. that's what the reg says. We also show on this site plan a very low landscape wall along the west edge of the parking lot, and that just is so that we do not grade within the farmland buffer. So we have to put a three foot high masonry wall between the parking lot and the farmland buffer area. Excuse me, Rich. You're saying if that pond overflows and it comes out this little spillway, it's not going to go on 33? Oh, it will. Oh, I was going to say that's what I see. Right. If it goes through that little grassy spillway. But I'm saying that it'll go over it's our outlet control, control structure and it'll go out that way before it reaches... I believe that the other control structure has the capacity to take all the flow beyond the 100-year storm. Okay. We have a two-foot rectangular weir at that height, so if we get any more flow, it'll go out the outlet control structure and go right out before it gets to that spillway. Okay. Well, see, now you're going to have a curb there, so it's not going to come over the curb, correct? Correct. There's a curb around the entire parking lot. Right. Well, even on 33, you've got an entire length curb, right? It's all curved from end to end. Right. But it's higher, so it'll flow yeah. down to the curb. Right. Uh, also, Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. I know we, we kind of talk whether we want to fence the basin or not. A lot of times we don't, but given the nature of these patients, I don't know, although we do have a, a pretty close restriction on them coming out. Uh, uh, it, 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 if you do, I wouldn't do the entire basin. You might do right around by the parking lot, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and, and, and use our typical the split rail with the, with the yeah. wire. With the wire yeah. mesh yeah. nailed to the split rail yeah, fence. Just, yeah, just a portion from the corner of the building around. I, I wouldn't do the whole basin. This section right. in here. Yeah. Adjacent yeah. to the building. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What about the board? <clears throat> no, I agree. Uh, it'd, be too, it'd be an overkill if you did the whole thing. Yeah. Chair, we one more. Um, previously, they had an emergency generator, but we don't see it on the plan. Will there be one? Uh, yes, it will be, and that was it was inadvertently left off. Yeah, there will be a generator. Uh, I believe the generator would be centrally located behind the the indent of the back of the building so that it's as far from the residence, which is situated to the north, as far from the residence as possible, and behind the building as a buffer. And it'll comply with whatever setbacks are needed? I believe that's an accessory structure, which is, uh, I think in this zone, it's maybe only uh, the height of the structure. It's like, it's only a, 
a three or four foot high or it's probably a minimum of ten feet or something. Well, the building is twenty five feet to the sideline. I think we can comply with that. Is that okay, Jack? We could also locate it in this little indent also. Which yeah, is, but now you're close to the residence. Yeah. I, I, I'm just wondering if it might be best to put it in the area by the refuse. I mean, it's an emergency generator. I take it it would be exercised during the day. Yep, I think that's a good idea. And what we could do is make the refuge enclosure even larger to enclose the generator so that it's inside the concrete for even more sound protection. They usually go on uh, once a week automatically for like 20 minutes. And they go mm -hmm. on. You, you can pick when you want. Most people do it like 3 or 4 in the afternoon, so it doesn't bother anybody. But we can do that as well, so we can have a, a sound buffer to the residents by extending that concrete wall behind it. And then they can get access to it, and it doesn't bother them. Yeah. Is that okay? My, my next question, air conditioning, is that all rooftop? No, that's on the ground. Air conditioning? Yeah, the, the actual condensing unit is on the ground. Okay, so where are they going to be placed? They were proposed to be on the east side of the building, which backs up to the firehouse lot and that commercial lot. How, approximately how many units? I believe there are a minimum of eight units, four and four for each side of the building. And you're going to pipe them? You're not going to split them? You know, four on one side, four on the other? I think they were all intended to be on the one side of the building, not not in the front, but all to the rear. I'm calling it the rear, the east side. All the condensing units were on the east side of the building and duct work over to the internally, but nothing was proposed on the west side of the building. That that conform to the setbacks. I believe the air conditioning units will conform to the setbacks. Yes. Is that going to be gas, oil, or do you know? I do not. I do not know the type of heat. I doubt it would be oil. It would probably gas. Probably gas. Probably gas heat. Okay. Spring. There's going to be sprinklers. Yes, there will be sprinklers in the building. I know that was a concern of the fire review. Right. The fire said they have no objection so long as we sprinkle the building, and we are proposing to do that. Okay. So you're okay. Jack, you okay with the air conditioning? Well, I just want to see where it's going to be. It's architecturals. But the architecturals don't show the air conditioning yet. If that's the ones that we have, the updated. There are no air conditioning units shown on the architecturals that I'm aware of, but the discussion was made that they would be on the east side of the building. In fact, the architecturals we have, I don't think, are for the new building because it doesn't show the indentation at the rear of the building. The architectural that that I have, and again, I did not do the architectural. I did not submit the architectural, so this is only my copy of it. It does show the indent for the porch on the north side of the building. This is the entrance way on the west side. This is the three two 
2017, March 2nd. It's labeled AA111. shows a sitting room at the back. Yep, and the same date. And the same date. Okay. What you said was there was an indentation in the back. Which I can see on that plan. Right, so, so what the architect did was the first building was a straight shot from end to end. He indented the building in and out and moved the porch to the north side. And similarly in the front, he brought the building in and out that was a change, and again, it didn't come from my office. I didn't know if you have There's seen no this or not. There's no revision date on that? The only date is the same date that's on the set that you have. It's dated March 2nd. No revisions date or it's not revised date at all. Just one date. Different layout. But the building, the building is how big, Rich? The building is 234 feet, eight and a half inches, Different. end to end, which includes the sitting room, which is a 16 foot at the with the porches. All right, without the sitting room, what, what what is it? Without the sitting room, it's length and width. Maybe 219, approximately. My, my question, how far back did you set the building, move the building back to the property line from the original drawing? Right now it's 113 feet from the right-of-way of State Highway 33. No, the, the, the joining Lot 24, the, you, you moved the building towards lot 24 didn't you whenever you moved the uh the oh. sitting area no, we moved it away. Step back off that lot line. yes we moved this part of the building closer to the firehouse lot right because to the sitting room to the sitting area it was 30 feet from the property line right now we're 25 feet, six inches from the building now you're 25 six from the building. From the side, from the back property line or side property line, as you want to call it. There should be an adequate room for air yeah, conditioning yeah, units, yeah. right? Yeah, I agree. Can you? Put and he's those... got a little cutout, which is probably about five feet. Right. Can you put those in the center? Well, there might be two foot offsets in here. Maybe to yeah, do because yeah, right will... there. Maybe that way. It is. Shop. It is right. three foot right. offset. That's yeah. right. Could you put that in that that ind indentation? Put those units. Sure. Instead of on both either end. end. I. I think right the. I mean, the architect is going to have to basically work with the building department to put these where they are properly located. We can suggest that they center them. They may need some more toward the end to get proper distribution. I'm not really 100% sure on the air conditioning HVAC design. I'm not part of that process. Okay. But we can recommend that they be centered as close to the middle of the building as possible. Okay. Well, the reason being is noise factor. Board. Uh, we took at this point. Were the, the, the we're proposing that intention yeah. area? Right. Is there any rooms there that they're going to be where the windows are going to be by a, a patient? Yeah. You, you're going to have them anywhere. Yeah, right I, okay. I feel because you're going to the whole back. It, is, it's going to be. It, yeah. But it, there's but, rooms on the entire back wall. 
okay. the entire wall has rooms, two, six, ten, fourteen, sixteen rooms along the back wall. Yeah. Straight through. Yeah. I mean, it's no, unfortunate. It's going to be there anyway. Okay. But it's locked down, so very, I, I would say, probably not going to open the windows anyway. I don't believe they're going to open windows, no. No. Yeah. It's going to be just like a hospital. I just have a questions on the, the gravel driveway. Yeah. Who's going to be putting that in and who's going to maintain that driveway? Okay, so the applicant is going to construct that <laughs> new gravel driveway for the neighbor. And once it's built, the neighbor is going to maintain his driveway as if it was where it is today. Yeah. So we'll install it. We'll remove the old one. But once it's put in, it's going to be his driveway, basically. Okay. Now, can I can I request something now? At least ten feet be paved on that driveway instead of bringing gravel straight out to your driveway. Like an At apron by our have an apron. Yes, we can do a ten foot apron. The, the reason I'm saying because now you're going to be tracking. Tracking rocks onto our driveway. Onto your driveway. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I would also suggest that they post a uh, private drive sign. Okay. So that your your customers don't drive in there. Just that let could be our overflow it. parking, Jack. Excuse me. That could be our overflow parking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The that, well, that's the other thing I'm afraid of. That might be where I know. would park. But ten foot paved apron is okay. With we'll paved <laughs> ten foot <laughs> apron. There, there's going to be a written agreement. As yes, written. written agreement, and there'll probably be a written easement as well, and a vacation of the old easement because it's not accurate. Once this goes through, the 10-foot easement will have to be modified. I'm sure there'll be a new driveway easement which follows the path of the driveway and then turns and follows this alignment and also includes the rights to cross the driveway here. So there will be new legal documents prepared for ingress and egress across this lot to benefit lot 21. Mr. Cohen, yes, could, do you have an objection to providing that for the record as um, part of this file? I have only been retained to represent my client in the approvals aspect. I have not, he has another attorney that represents him in the acquisition. I don't think it will be a problem when it's eventually done to provide it to you, but it's not created as of this moment. Can, can we find out about that? Because I, I would like it to be well, part. Mm -hmm. I, I don't believe it. I know it doesn't exist right now. You just make it a condition of approval, that's all. Because we have to get that approved by DOT. No, no I understand so that. But I have no problem providing you a copy of it once it exists, absolutely. Yeah, I, I would but like it to be. But it's not going to exist like the next couple of weeks, I don't think. Right. Yeah, well, make it a condition okay. of approval. Okay. okay. Well, the, the reason being, I, I know we've had a couple of cases with shared driveways, yep. and, and I don't want this to come back. To I know. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I know you know which ones I'm talking about, Jack. No, that's all. So. We'll definitely provide that. Mr. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Mallet. I want to go through your letter real quick. Well. We've covered he most of it. He's covered pretty much everything. Is there anything else? Right, yeah. We talked about no sidewalk on 33. We talked about developing in the buffer. Um, we talked about the downstream drainage. That, right. That's going to be subject to DOT. Yeah, uh, they've covered everything. The only other thing, and Jen had it, was, uh, I think, talking about pesticides and what it is. I didn't raise the issue because I didn't have it as a, a farm or anything. I had it basically as residential with two dwelling units. Uh, but I, I don't know. You you probably know better whether there was ever a farm. What's that? The, what, was this property ever farmed? Yes, it was. It was. So was it orchards? Oh, or no. This, this was a motel. Yeah. Okay. You know, it, so, it, it's so been a motel no, for 60 years, I think. Right. You, usually orchards is when we usually get the pesticide testing. You don't usually get it. Usually it's orchards that have it because they spray. Yeah, I, I don't think this property was ever used no. as a farm. I, we I just included it because there was some identification in, in the previous submittal that identified it, right. it as a historic farm. That's all. Right. right. Now, they will need a variance for that 
that drive access. That's correct. Because it crosses into the farmland. Yes, that is correct. That, right, that from that well, from yes. our buffer requirements. Right. Right. Yes. So I have the buffer and the sidewalk along Route 33, and the sidewalk from the site out to Route 33. I think we were. I, think Jen I thought you got part. that in the. We I I, the I identified the sidewalk as a, as something that was approved prior with the use variance application. Right. It's obviously subject to the DOT approving that, yes. but we did get the waiver. And I also got had the the driveway in the buffer as a variance that was right. was granted with right. the use variance application. Correct. I just have a couple things, Mr. Chair, because they hit pretty much everything in my letter. If you're if you're done, yeah. Yep. Done. Uh, but Jennifer, you, I, know, I just heard your statement, but they moved right, so the we should buffer to where it didn't require the the it wasn't going to require the variance for the farmland because they moved yeah. the buffer. Well, well that, but that driveway was always in the buffer, regardless. They moved the structures out. They moved the structures. Yes. They, they moved so the, the location, the right. yeah. location of the driveway in the buffer, Todd, has moved pursuant to your conversations with the neighbor. Right. So I would just reaffirm that relief with this application with the revised location. Right. We would take no exception to the granting of the variance because, number one, we had granted it with the use variance previously, this realignment is simply to accommodate the neighbor's vehicle. So I would take no exception to be granted and again. Elim it eliminates okay. an extra access on 33. Correct. Right. No, I, I understand it, but I'm trying to clear I think he's just record. trying to make sure it's got, clean for you. Everything's covered there. Right. Appreciate that. So, Todd, I just have a couple things. Mm -hmm. um, there's wetlands on this property that I see identified on the plans, and the corner of the building goes into that. Is that going to be just a straight fill permit, or is there averaging, or what is happening? Okay, so what's proposed is a GP6, general permit number six, filling of isolated wetlands, okay. the non-tributary wetlands, the not waters of the USA, and uh, it's 0.11 acres of fill, and it should be a straight fill with the end result being no wetland and no buffer remaining. Okay, that's fine. I, I agree that that you know it's a isolated wetland and they they are eligible for to fill a portion of it up to a certain amount. I think it's a quarter acre um, under that permit that would not require averaging or anything of that nature. I agree. Yep. Have you already got that permit? No, we don't. No. Okay, so it's based on receiving the permit. Right. I mean that would be like an outside agency approval. Okay. Um, Rich, the dimensions of the sign, you have kind of a wider base at the bottom that was not included in the dimensions on your detail sheet. We would just request that you revise the, the dimensions to include. You basically take like the top of the monument area and you carry that straight down, but there's a kind of a platform on the bottom that's not included that needs to be included. Okay, the, that's intended to be the ground level, I believe, Jen. Is it below grade? That's the dimension three feet is to the bottom of the actual sign, which is above ground. That, okay. that larger piece is a footing that you wouldn't really see be buried. It's going to be below grade. That larger piece below it, yes, that's okay. below grade. And then can you just dimension on your plans the, the setback for the sign because it's just not dimensioned, that's all. Yes, definitely. But it is behind. It's more than 20 feet. Yeah, I saw that it was behind that, that line. Um, and then the only other thing is under our item number six, which is just some plan revisions. Do you, is there any of those items that would become a problem for you? Well, under A, we're going to modify that handicap parking with Jack's office. Right. Um, we already said H to L would be fine. Right. So I'm just, you know, there's just yeah, some plan yeah, yeah. changes. Yeah. You know, we're going to revise the parking schedule, too, because now it's going to be 30 parking spaces instead of 32. No, we have no problem with those comments. Okay. Number so then six. I would have nothing else. Okay. Sherry? Yeah, I don't have anything as long as, uh, you know, they'll make the changes that I have listed in there. I'm fine with it. That was under that item six we just talked right. about. So. No, I, I know. And uh, just in, in case uh, you're wondering, the, I did ask for calculations to be put on the plans, but they um, are replanting what all their requirements, so they don't have to pay. For their tree removal. Okay. Any questions of the board or comments from the board? Um, based on what Sherry said, you will be toning down that left side because.
That was the only thing I was concerned about. It seemed like it was an overkill with the, uh, you know, the conifers and the trees. So that area on the west side of the Yes, I'll work with wow. Sherry to okay. come up with the planets. And you'll put cool. more varieties, because I, I agree, too, that it, it's almost in the front of We've the We've only building. got like three or four varieties. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll make more varieties there. Okay. Just an, another comment, and I, I noticed on the back side of the building between lot 24 over there, you have trees planted back there. They, that would be a good buffer for the air conditioners, too. You know, uh, yeah, there are, there are some trees behind the building, and again, we could find out where the air conditioning units will wind up, and we could adjust the locations to match up with where they would be. Is that okay with you, Sherry? Might even change a species to make them lower, lower growing. Yeah. Okay. I have a question, Rich, about the septic. It seems a little small for 30, for lack of a better word, bedrooms. I mean, by house standards, what is, what is the standard to, to compute the square footage of the bed for a situation? It's actually been designed to meet the state code for this type of use. Uh, which is, it's not like a household where you go with, uh, I know you have 200 gallons for the first bedroom and et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. We're down to, I think it's 75 gallons per bedroom straight number. And uh, that, including showers, including the kitchen, and the sizing that we're using, uh, we're putting a pump system here. I say, is it a pressure dosing? Pressure dosing, which allows us to reduce the square footage uh, slightly below the standard gravity flow. So we've gone through the calculation, and this is actually slightly oversized, as you see it. It may appear small, but it's okay. larger than the code requires. It looks like the water's pretty high here. How much replacement is under it? Did you go that far yet? There's going to be four feet of replacement under the bed. So it's not real deep? No. Mm -hmm. what, I got. what about laundry? Laundry's included as well. Yeah, laundry, now, kitchen, showers, and the bedrooms. Now, are they going to filter any of the laundry? Is uh, that going to run through any type of filter before it discharges? Just the only filtering is from the kitchen through the grease trap. There's no, there's no filtering I'm aware of with the laundry. So all the bleach and everything else goes. I believe it's like any other residential type of use. There's no uh, commercial aspect of this. It's really house waste kitchen, bathrooms, it's residential in nature. Looks like a lot of drainage pipe on this job. I would have been uh, tempted to sheet flow the whole thing right to the pond, but... <laughs> <laughs> we tried that. It, was not the, not, it wasn't easy Jack, to grade Jack this Jack one out. Like Any other questions of the board? Professionals? No, at this time, I'm going to request a motion to open to public. So moved. Motion by Mr. San Clemente. I second it, Mr. Chairman. Seconded by Mr. Cardalicchio. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? We're opening for questions, comments from the public. Hello, my name is Charles Day. I'm with the Tritown News. I do. Charles Day, D A Y E. Okay. Carry on. Uh, I just have a couple of questions for clarification's sake. Um, first, how many parking spaces? I, I might have misheard that. 30. I'm a third. 30. 30. There's 30 spaces. And 15 of those count for the people working the facility. And you just said that it's a residential type dwelling, 30 bedrooms. You know. Oh. That, that's not what he testified to. Okay. I'm a, no, I'm asking. Okay. Rich, you want to tell him what we testified to with regard to the parking? With regard to the parking, our plan depicts 32 spaces before we 
had a meeting tonight. Now we're talking about 30 spaces with room for uh, guest, not guest parking, but arrival, a designated area for arrivals of patients so that they're not forced to park somewhere further from the front door than needed. But there's about the need for, uh, I think, 10 to 12 employees on the site. The balance of the, pro of the parking spaces are available for uh, guests uh, and visitors. And we said that taking away the two spaces will leave us 30 designated spots. So we'll have approximately 15 or 17 open area spots on a regular basis that are not used by the employees available I, for visitors. I, I think the short answer here is that there's 11 employees and the facility really needs 15. So there's 26 spaces that are necessary and they're providing 30. Right. Okay, and I'm just trying to clarify. Space per bed. All right, yeah. and this uh, assisted uh, living facility, it's going to be housing uh, senior citizens that can't really take care of themselves anymore. Uh, it's more of a uh, memory care facility. Memory care. Oh, it's like Al Alzheimer's and something like and that. Dementia. Yeah. Dementia. Oh, okay. I was more asking because if it's if, if it's living quarters, it would make sense to have whatever spaces you need for the people working in the facility and then 30 spaces for the living. So I was just clarifying why there wasn't that. But if it's a uh, facility. They do not drive to the facility. Yeah, and that's what I was They don't have cars. I didn't, I didn't quite hear you before when you opened up saying it was mostly uh, people with memory or that type of issues. All right. Thank you. You want anyone else in the public wish to make a comment or ask a question? Yeah, I think so. Seeing none, can I have a motion to close? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Mr. Cardalicchio. Second. Second by Mr. San Clemente. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none. Professionals, any further comments, questions, board? You'd like summation? Uh, Mr. Chairman, just very briefly, uh, based on the testimony provided this evening and the uh, all the various uh, agreements from the applicant with regard to the board's request, all of which will be part of the record, uh, I would ask that the board grant preliminary and final site plan approval for the 30-bed assisted living memory care facility. Okay. okay. What's the pleasure of the board? Well, members of the board, it looks like <clears throat> this is uh, a much better proposal and application than we originally saw. It was cut down from two buildings to one. So I'm going to make a motion to approve this application that has a driveway has been taken care of, drainage, parking has been taken care of, so there'll be a block enclosure for the recycling. And <clears throat> we're going to remove two parking spaces, so the applicant will be working with Jack to get those parking spaces removed so we can have a, a better pickup area. Uh, the inlet's going to be moved. So there'll be more of a grass area for the filtration. There'll be on-site testing for the stormwater basin. There'll be a partial fence around the, the basin, so we don't have to do the whole basin then. Uh, the generator is going to be enclosed. Excuse me. The generator is going to be moved to the enclosure of the refuse. Uh, for the private driveway, we're going to have a 10-foot apron, and there'll be a sign, private driveway, and then there's going to be an approval of the shared driveway that we'll be able to see. Okay. Do I have a second? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll second the approval. Um, the applicant has made some, I think, some positive changes from the original plan. The safety concern on the drive-in, I think the parking lot is going to be a low use, and that's why I feel it's, uh, you know, you've made every bit of concessions to make it safer, and that's why I will second the approval. Okay. 
Any other further findings of facts from the board? Seeing that, can we have a roll call, please? Yes, you may. Mr. Cortelicchio? Yes. Mr. Mertens? Yes. Mr. Posh? Yes. Mr. San Clemente? Yes. Mr. Turk? Yes. Mr. Bloom? Yes. Chairman Nansen? No. Because of the farmland buffer. You had well, to expect he that. Well, you got to give me. You got to give me what? <laughs> okay. Uh, motion carried. Motion carried. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Good luck. Appreciate your time this evening. Okay. Is there any further business of the board? Again, Jennifer, it's been an honor you. having you here. Miss you. We're going to miss you too. You better. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'll still come. <laughs> I, I'll have to come now. Are you going to start giving uh, tests for the advanced? I will now. Okay. <laughs> okay, can I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, oh we, we need to go into. Okay, I'm sorry. Can I need Almost to read better. This into the record? Yes, please. Executive session resolution. Whereas Title 10, Chapter 4, Section 13 of the New Jersey Revised Statutes requires that the public shall not be excluded from any meetings of a public body unless a resolution authorizing such exclusion is adopted at a public meeting, and whereas the Zoning Board of Adjustment of the Township of Howell has determined that such a closed meeting is required to discuss certain matters which are exempted from consideration with the public in attendance under New Jersey Revised Statutes 10 colon 4-12, namely litigation. Now therefore be it resolved by the Zoning Board of Adjustment of the Township of Howell that the public shall be excluded from the next portion of this meeting and that the Zoning Board of Adjustment will not reconvene a public session thereafter. Be it further resolved that minutes will be kept of the meeting in closed session and the time and circumstances under which the discussion conducted in closed session can be disclosed to the public cannot be determined at this time. Okay. Now we can have a motion to close. Can I have a motion to close? So moved, Mr. Chair. Moved by Mr. Bloom. Second, Mr. Chair. Second by Mr. Cardalicchio. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Zoning board adjourned at 10 after 9.